eat, Phil. So I was wondering if you could help me with an experiment. I want to generate as much electricity with human power. What do you think? I think that sounds awesome. Okay, great. Let's go back to Science Max headquarters. Is that the portal? Yeah. Don't worry, all the kinks are worked out. What it is. It's this. Uh, where did you end up? I was in the vents. Oh, I ended up in the bathroom. All right, well, now that we're here. Okay, so this is what I started with, and this is uh, just, you know, an electric motor, right? Right. right. Um, so you can generate electricity, you spin it, so I figured in order to generate more electricity, you get a bigger generator? Exactly, yeah. The bigger the generator, the bigger the magnet, the more the copper, the more the electricity. Oh, uh, well, you know what we should do is we should just get an even bigger one, like a giant one that they use in like at a power plant or something, or? Mm, not quite. That would be too big for a person to be able to turn. It'd just oh. be impossible. So you think this is a good size? I think this is a great size. Okay, so that's that's good. This is called a multimeter. We're gonna hook up the wires. I'll do black to uh, black. Black to black. To red. And as you turn our generator, we can see just how much electricity we're, we're generating. Okay, so. Here, you hold on to that. This, and, and I'll can turn start the turning. generator. Now it's time to play How Much Electricity Did They Make? 2.4 volts, yeah, it's not it's, bad. Oh, 2.4, yeah, it's not great. That's just enough to power a small LED flashlight. Better keep trying, boys. I got some handles here that we're going to attach ah, to the perfect. end of the generator so yeah. we can spin it. Okay, let's try. Huh? No matter how fast I crank the large handle, I couldn't make any more electricity than before. Okay, let's um, try something else. I, I, but it's a smaller handle. Perfect, okay, that's, yeah. That's good? Yeah, well, maybe it'll let us get more spins in. Oh right. yeah, because I don't have to make as big a circle. Exactly. Yeah, it's working already. We're up to like 3.5. Now, how much electricity is Phil making? 4.5. That's the same as three AA batteries. Maybe enough to power a toy car. Still a long way to go. Yeah, it's, it's a lot higher with the faster spins. Oh, all right, all right, you, you okay? I'm okay. Maybe we could use like some gears or something like that. Oh yes, you know that's a good idea because the the this circle that I'm making here, I can only go so fast. So yeah. Maybe with gears you can do one circle here equals like ten circles on the other gear. Exactly. Yeah. Okay, uh, so kind of like the like the gears on on like a, on like a bike. Yeah, the gears on a bike or something like that. A bike, a bike. of course. Oh. Yeah. So okay, so we get a bike and we attach the back tire to. The generator. The generator, and then you can use the pedals of the big gear to power the small gears. Okay, great. Right. We'll go get a bike. Yeah. Yeah, high five. Uh, All, right. All right. Oh, right, they're over here. Everything has a resonance, a note that it vibrates best at. Let's say this fish tank is, well, any container where sound would be vibrating, and the waves of water are actually waves of sound. Now, normally, sound waves will bounce around inside the container, off the walls, and go back and forth like that. And how fast I move this piece of wood is the frequency or the note that we're playing. I could vibrate this wood very fast and make a high note. I could move this plank very slow and make a low note. And the waves just bounce around inside the container. But there's a speed I can move this plank where the waves stop going side to side and suddenly get twice as big. The waves bouncing off the sides of the tank are meeting the waves going in the other direction. But what we end up seeing is peaks of the waves not moving side to side, just going up and down, like you see here. This is the resonant frequency of this container. So, let's max this out. Say I have a wine glass, and I wet my finger, and I rub it around the rim. It vibrates at a certain note that note is the resonant frequency of this wine glass. So what would happen if we were to play that note back to this wine glass really, really loud? And yes, this is something you should not try at home. This note makes the glass vibrate the most. Finding the perfect note things vibrate best at is great for musical instruments, but it's not great for this wine glass. The sound waves are causing the glass to vibrate a lot. And because this glass is delicate, it can only vibrate so much before it breaks.
the vibrations were so strong that the glass literally shook itself to pieces. <laughs> Science! Sorry. Science! Oh, wait. Science! Hey, Anna, I... Huh? I feel weird. Why do I feel weird? I think you're a chair. Well, that's not good. Oh, hold on a second. Am I... Am I good? Okay. Hi, Anne. Good to see you. Here's your lab coat. Thank you. So you're from Let's Talk Science, right? I am. All about science education, just like us. Today, I need your help to max out our earthquake table. This is the table this looks part, great. obviously, but this is a tower I've made out of popsicle sticks. Yeah. So in order to max it out, I've already built a large shaker table. Come on. This is my large shaker table. So it's got basketballs underneath as the floor balls, but it works exactly the same. Whoa. 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 <laughs> okay, so what kind of tower should we make for the shaker table? If we want something tall, then we'll reinforce it a couple spots. But the true test, it's got to have some sort of weight on top so that it will mimic the weight that would be on a real tower. Right, so maybe I could get a plastic bin and I'll just put some sandbags for weight inside. That would be perfect. And then balls so that when it falls over, the balls will go everywhere. That would be perfect. Okay, great. We shake off. <laughs> uh, I don't know. I think we should just get off. This is a giant tub of sand and water, and this is a vibrating platform that will simulate an earthquake. Now, as you can see, this sand is totally solid. I can jump all around on this sand, no problem. But when I turn on the vibrating table and simulate an earthquake, things will change. The vibrations bring the water below the sand to the surface and cause the sand particles to separate. What was solid now turns to liquid in my simulated earthquake, and I start to sink. I'm up to my shins! And there you go! Soil liquefaction! Hey, look at that! It's totally solid! <laughs> Woo-hoo-hoo! So I look back in! I am totally... Uh-oh. You know what I realized? When it stops vibrating, it really becomes solid again. And it's very tough to... <sighs> well, there... There you go. Soil liquefaction. I'm, uh... I'm really kind of stuck in here, I... ...of reasons but most famously in clocks. Why were pendulums used in clocks? Well, here's why. Let's mark every time the pendulum hits the bottom of the swing right here. Okay, watch. All right, now here's the question. How fast will the beeps be if I swing it from much higher up? Let's find out. No matter how high the pendulum swings, it keeps the same frequency. That's why they were used in clocks because it could swing for a long while, and even though it would lose energy, it would still keep perfect time. The frequency of a pendulum doesn't change, no matter how high it swings or how much weight is on the bottom. The frequency comes from how long the line is. Now this is a pendulum wave. Because each bowling ball has a line that's a different length, they have a slightly different frequency. They start out swinging together, but soon they start to make interesting patterns. Remember, each pendulum is keeping its own perfect time, even if it's slowing down. It's only the length of the line that gives each pendulum a different frequency. And now, we're gonna max it out with, with, um, well, I guess these are already bowling balls, so this is already pretty maxed out. I'm just gonna, just gonna leave that there. These are balloons. This is a laser, and these are awesome laser safety glasses. Now, lasers are made of light, and light has a frequency. In fact, each color of light has a different frequency. This is a red laser. Check it out. Yeah, cool. This is also a very powerful laser. 
<laughs> I can pop the blue balloon with the red laser because the blue absorbed the red light from the laser and then it heated up and the balloon popped. But here's the cool thing. I cannot pop a red balloon with a red laser because the red balloon reflects the red light from the red laser and I can't pop it. If I wanted to pop a balloon with a red laser, I need to use a darker balloon, one that absorbs the red light, like, <laughs> like a black balloon. <laughs> so there you go. Lasers, frequencies of light. I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep this red balloon because it's always nice to have a balloon. <laughs> Chris and I are maxing out the Vibrobot, but our last version shook itself apart. Now the plan is to start with something more solid and try again. We found some very solid steps and added an even bigger motor, an even bigger battery, and attached a half circle wheel to make the vibrations when the motor spins. We add some paintbrushes and fire it up. Here we go. Come on. Go, Vibrobot. Wants to move. Is it moving at all? Hmm. Hmm. So it's still not working. It's sort of getting caught in the paper and it's on the paintbrushes. And the, yeah, the paintbrushes seem to be absorbing too much vibration and then the paper's stopping it as well. So why don't we remove the paintbrushes? Yeah. And we might as well remove the paper if we don't have any more paintbrushes. Yes. And we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. Okay. No paintbrushes, no paper. Okay. Now let's try it. Three, two, one, go! Yeah! Aha! It's moving. Not bad. The shaking is good, but I don't know if the shaking is enough. So what do we do? Well, we could add another battery. Another battery which would give it more power? That's right. OK, let's try that. OK. OK, so it wasn't working before. No. Not enough power. And now we've got a second battery here. That's right. We've wired them up so that one power feeds into the other, so we've got twice as much juice as we did. So it's just a matter of clipping this onto there. That's right. But hold on. Yeah, safety glasses, because now we don't know what's going to happen anymore. Ready? Three, two, one. The extra battery makes a big difference. The new Vibrobot shakes around and only shakes itself apart a little. All right, Whoa. that was amazing. <laughs> okay, so all we needed was more power. That's right, I think it didn't have enough power to, to vibrate up and down and that's why it wasn't moving every time it hit the ground. So I think if we're gonna use this much power, I think we need to build it again. Okay. Build it even stronger and with a bigger motor. Yeah. And more power and then maybe I ride it. You think we can build that? Of course. Of course. Okay, let's do it. 